<laughs> Hello and happy Monday and oh what a beautiful one it's turning out to be. Um, this San Francisco sunset is just on fire and um, I just thought I would share a couple of thoughts with you guys about a video that I did on Friday about loss and specifically the constant unfounded fear of losing again and it's most likely trauma related and having to do with the fact that I've lost in the past and my sympathies to all of you who have and even more so to everyone who has not yet uh, the inevitability. The funny thing is that this whole concept of fearing loss it's, it's funny because it implies that we actually have a choice in the matter which couldn't be further from the truth. Let's see the sad truth is we, we don't control Jack and the sooner that I learn to accept that in life and actually, uh, you know, just accept letting go, the, well, the better off I'll feel. And this is actually a really tough one for me, uh, something that I've been learning over and over again and something that manifested uh, Friday in a insecurities-based uh, video blog that's now private from uh, Friday. And, and it reminded me of, well, a positive spin that I'd like to put on this and some a tip that I can share with you all. Uh, and that is that no matter, you know, if it's a person who's wronged you or your insecurities or that big project, that thing, you know, you ought to be getting around to doing, um, when these things pop into our heads, we go, you know, oh, right, there's that thing and I'm supposed to do that, but I'm busy right now and so I can't take action. So a lot of times what we do is we put these on the back burner, as it were, until eventually it pops back up to your mind. You're like, oh, right, damn, wasn't I supposed to do that thing? And the trick is, the, the crazy thing is, while it's on the back burner, it's boiling the whole time. And while you may not be co like consciously thinking about it, your subconscious is dwelling and it will spin you the frick out until you remember it again. And uh, so the best way that I've found to actually keep my overactive subconscious, as it were, in check uh, has actually been to show intent and to make a plan. It actually doesn't matter if it's a good plan at all. As long as I've tricked my subconscious into thinking that it's something I'm going to do, uh, it has been the most fantastic way uh, of calming that down. And it doesn't matter even if it's something in my heart. I'll, I'll write it down. And, and trust me, while I love uh, the Google Docs and the Evernotes and all of that cloud stuff, uh, there is nothing in this world that beats pen and paper. So. I keep the moleskin uh, in my wallet. I've been doing that for the last couple of years. And let me tell you, it's like magic where meet space meets, where that uh, transference of energy from the back of your mind through your hand and onto that pen and onto that paper. And there it can live and you don't have to fester on it. And it's such an amazing medium. And it's also something that I'm doing to some extent here with these video blogs. And I'd love to, to share that with you um, as, imperfect as they may be and thank you for all of your support and uh, so if I haven't already enough let me uh, do it again and that is to enthusiastically recommend paper so anyway thank you for listening and I'll see you guys tomorrow